Yes, I, I, well, I think there's been an incredible uh, progress made in clean tech, so that it's, it, it almost is not a technical question anymore um, to have clean energy source for the everybody and um, transport and clean transport. So um, the, it's, it, all of these technologies can still be improved greatly, but the lines of, it, of progress are already established so that if we could put in the necessary gigawatts of solar power and if we had all of our cars electric but being powered off of the, their, their inputs be powered off of solar power, then you have energy and you have transport both clean renewable resources, essentially sunlight being translated in all these things. That's a big step forward towards a clean tech future where we could say to each other that the planet is being taken care of and we're not degrading the planet by living a prosperous life on it. And the two are in a, in a, um, a stable uh, but dynamic balance with, uh, with each other. So I think that's um, quite possible uh, technologically. It's, it's an economic problem because it's not profitable. And it's also um, a kind of a logistical problem because it does imply uh, a couple generations of intense work by everybody. In, it's infrastructure. So the amount of work that's been put in the infrastructure we have now, about an equal amount of work might have to be put in. And it would go faster and might be more directed. But nevertheless, we're talking about massive projects. It's not like um, the moonshot. It's more like um, World War II itself. So um, this project in, in logistical terms um, and in social terms is, is a huge one. But it's not a technical problem, if, you know what I'm, if the distinction I'm making is clear. Really, it, 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 so many things are a political issue because once we decide what we want to do and direct our human efforts in that way, science and technology, engineering and mathematics have given us such power, we can accomplish all kinds of amazing things. Um, I hope that we will inhabit Mars. I feel that it is completely possible technologically and that it, it would be a good project to do when we are sure that we have a, a sustainable and survivable civilization on Earth. So, uh, in other words, it's not the, uh, necessary to save humanity or to save Earth's environment. It's, it's simply not that important. But if we have a functioning, sustainable culture on Earth, then at that point, Mars gets really interesting because we can go there and it'll start out, I predict, like Antarctica. There'll be scientific stations with scientists studying it. It'll be quite exciting for everybody else, but for the people actually doing it, there'll be a small minority of humanity. And then it may creep. Uh, it may creep uh, in a way that even Antarctica might not creep into a place where kids are born, towns are developed, people get interested in it as a place and uh, develop a loyalty to it as a place where Earth becomes less and less relevant to them. If And that's this is much more speculative because it's hard to tell whether human bodies will do well in the 38% gravity and in the, the dust fines that may be really hard to keep out of people's lungs. So Mars is, a, is an open question, but I think we can um, occupy it as scientific observers anyway, and maybe more. Well, I think we need to study these geoengineering methods, and I also think that geoengineering is a terrible word for the process because it implies that we can engineer a system that's bigger than we know how to operate. So once again, it's a case of a bad name like transhumanism. Geoengineering should be called uh, geobagging or geofinessing or uh, environmental um, management because we would like to manage it, or stewardship. You need uh, words that we don't even have yet, because, and that's why geoengineering comes in as a word. It's a new word, but it's hubristic, and it implies things that put people off. Now, if you say that uh, women's rights are a geoengineering technology, you have to unpack that phrase. But what you get is that human numbers matter to the successful um, um, coming to terms with human beings on the planet is partly a matter of pure human numbers. It'd be better if we had a stable population. So a stabilizing population could be seen as a geoengineering technique. You could even say lowering the human population would be a geoengineering technique. And if you agree that far, 
then what stabilizes human population is women's rights. So at that point, you have human, uh, a human right issue, which is simply women's rights, also being a population stabilizer, which then has environmental impacts, which then helps to save the planet, which is a geoengineering technique, because it influences the whole Earth. So in other words, laws become geoengineering. And laws are like carbon standards. That's a geoengineering technique. We're just going to burn less carbon. And then there's the things people think of when you talk about geoengineering. One of them is just as simple as can be. You drag CO2 out of the atmosphere, you freeze it, you put it at the bottom of an ocean trench near where subduction is taking place, and you subtract carbon from the atmosphere. Now that's geoengineering. It's a technology. It's a, a certain vacuuming process and cleansing process. That, it strikes me, is perfectly safe perfectly sensible thing to do. So um, the word geoengineering is very often used for things like putting sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere to bounce more sunlight away. Better than messing with the ocean probably because it seems reversible and maybe even local, but in any case it's something if it didn't work then it would be like a volcano explosion a few years later. If we saw that there were problems with it, it would go away, we wouldn't do it again. It doesn't solve ocean acidification and yet it might depress temperatures when we need temperatures depressed. So there's a more uh, controversial, and probably it's the poster child now for geoengineering, this uh, sulfur dioxide injected into the high atmosphere. I think we need to study it and accept that it might be something that humanity does. How we would agree to do it is very hard to know. And yet you can't just reject it. As an environmentalist, which I feel I am, as a green, as a leftist, you can't just say, oh, it's the engineers trying to um, uh, tech our way out of our problems again, and that will never work because that's wrong on three or four different levels. We do have to take our way out of our problems, and it might work as a one band-aid amongst other ameliorative methods. So everything should be on the table, including even new nuclear power that burns the nuclear fuel down to a weapons grade residue and as a generational move. In other words, a, a, a technology, a bridge technology, to a cleaner and safer tech later, if carbon is enough of a problem for us, which I think it is, then we have to consider even radical things like that. So yes, geoengineering, let's talk about it while admitting that it's dangerous and that it has a, an unfortunate name right now. Well, I think we will slightly cook the planet and that there will be uh, extreme environmental damage and way more extinctions than we would want. And that's where we'll go wrong because we don't have good political mechanisms for making global change. So uh, what we need is uh, a word of mouth all the way around the planet. And here you've got the social media. We need everybody equally educated and scientifically literate so that people admit that they believe in science because they go to the doctor when they're sick. So that consilience, more talk about how all the sciences fit together with the other sciences, that you can't cherry pick them, that you, as a, as a person alive on earth right now, you believe in science because you live by it and you're alive because of it. So in other words, we are in for a really difficult century, but cultural change does happen fast, and it happens through word of mouth, through us talking to each other, and then taking political action. So hopefully we'll get there.